We're all familiar with these memory savers, right? Whenever we have work that requires us to disconnect the battery, this keeps the memory alive in our modules and the presets on our radios. Pretty simple to use. We just plug this one end here into the data link connector. And we plug this end in, and that's the rub. You can't uh, put it in the cigarette lighter. This is not a perpetual motion machine here. So you need some sort of an external power supply. You can do it through these alligator clips and tote around a 12 volt lead acid battery. I don't have a spare lead acid battery. I don't want to tote one around. And to air is human. You're going to get the polarity wrong on these just at one time and the ECM will let you know what it thinks about that. The other option is one of those portable battery packs. Uh, they have them in lead acid type also. They're pretty bulky, fairly expensive. I don't have any use for them. I don't own one. There's some lithium ion battery packs now. Uh, a little pricey, uh, more portable. I don't own one of those either. What I do own is these DeWalt drill batteries. Too bad there's no physical connection and too bad that they're 20 volts. Or is it? There is no problem that can't be solved. So there's the physical connection, 12.6 volts. And here's the build. What better way to start a project than with a project box? These are fairly standard and easily found on eBay. I ended up getting a bag of five of those for five dollars so that's roughly about a dollar in on this project so far. The idea will be to fit this box on top of here and the first place to start is making a slot to accept this latch. If I measure from this stop it's about a half inch center. It's about a quarter inch wide. And it's roughly an inch long. And another one in the middle here to make it easier. Quarter inch drill bit. And here I'm just going to pluck away at it a little bit. Uh, don't press too hard on the knife. This uh, plastic is fairly brittle. With the hole for the latch done, all we need now is a couple of guides on the side. I found uh, these at the hardware store. They're inch and a half by inch and a half. Pre-drilled holes. There was a package of four for about a buck and a half. You just have to measure from uh, where that slot is on the battery pack to the edge of the box. And I can save you a lot of work here and tell you that it's three-eighths of an inch. We need a bend and on here it happens to be where the edge of these holes are but I'm looking at three-eighths of an inch from this edge. So we're going to bend these two pieces at that location with these bosses on the outside of the bend.
So now I just hold that out there. I'm using the battery pack as a guide for the proper height. And I'm just marking these holes. I'll do that on both sides. Even though these holes have been pre-drilled 3 16 I'm still going with 1 8 pop rivets because 3 16 pop rivets would be a little bit much for these uh, boxes. What I do is I use backup washers on both sides to make up for that. See what that says. This is a 50 amp maxi fuse. It doesn't matter what uh, amperage it is, I'm going to completely destroy this thing. So I broke apart the uh, maxi fuse, I got these blades out of there and I bent a little tab. I drilled a bunch of 1 16 holes. This is 23 millimeters apart, these blades. I also scuffed the bottom of this uh, box with some very coarse sandpaper. There's going to be some hot glue and this will adhere a little bit better that way. That's what's going to hold those blades in. I have a small voltmeter here. You know, these things are only two dollars on eBay. I bought three of them just uh, for projects like this. Here's another real bargain on eBay. These things go for two bucks a piece. They're a buck converter. They have a, an adjustment for whatever voltage you want. And they're going to go in this box as well. There's quite a bit going on right now. I've soldered the blades to the input side of the buck converter. Before I can go much further and solder the output side, I need to prepare the, the lid in which this voltmeter will be recessed. I've made a lot of headway just with a utility knife cutting out that rectangle. Uh, the lid is thinner and softer than the body of the box, so a utility knife uh, is getting the job done. I don't know if it's easier to do that cutout with a knife or with a saw, but the voltmeter is in the lid, the two contact blades are soldered and to the input side of the uh, buck converter and the output side of the buck converter is going out to the wiring for this. There's no switch, that's intentional. I'm going to uh, tuck this uh, buck converter along that side. There's a couple of standoffs that I don't want to cut so this thing will sit at a bit of an angle. There's going to be hot gluing for the two blades and the buck converter. These 3.8 hexagon nuts are just the right height for what I want the blades to stick out to the box. So I'm just going to sit the box on top of there. And when I glue these uh, blades in, they will protrude past the bottom of this box here just the right amount. Okay, so after a lot of uh, soldering and a lot of gluing, so I'm going to show you what goes on in here. First of all, that nice little green glow that's in here is an LED that's on top of that uh, buck converter. I put a big glob of hot glue to retain those two blades. I didn't mind if it spilled over onto the uh, buck converter because that converter had to be secured anyways. I just made sure that I didn't flood right over top of the adjustment for the potential meter. I ran into some interference with the voltmeter on that uh, amount of uh, hot glue, but I worked around it and I got it to fit and the cover does close. There. All done. 
finished product guys and I'll show you how you can there's a battery there are the blades in the back they're good and solid there is quite a bit of effort to build that and in the end you get a very nice shop tool there we go I'm calling it a night these guys take care